So it's safe to say in uh, recent years, I've become more of a uh, emulator type person. I've been a person that's sort of been straying away from most of the recent releases ever since I've uh, kind of just been finding them to be the uh, similar uh, similar reskins of one another. For example, nowadays I about, I about get games that are uh, trying to be a competitive shooter or games that are trying to be a co-op shooter or games that are trying to be a tacky open world game and for all those instances I've got one specific game that I'll go back to nowadays and play because it often does it the best. For example, competitive wise I play really nothing other than Siege at this point, maybe some Overwatch, but I typically don't fancy a whole lot of these other games that are coming out. I often found that I would dump a lot of money into them and I would play them for maybe a couple hours and I would go back to what I was finding to be the definitive game in my opinion. And this has given me the time to play a lot of older classic games. And how am I playing older classic games, you might ask? Well, I'm not buying cartridges and buying old systems. In fact, I'm just downloading ROMs, putting them onto these custom firmware PlayStation 3s or these random devices that I have and playing it on them. You might remember a video a while back I did covering something called a GPD Win, basically playing Skyrim on the go. It's a fun fact to say that I use that device on a daily, daily basis, and it's not something that I'm just saying just to say it. I love the GPD Win, and I love devices like it. I slap RetroArch on it, and I play games anywhere I go. Before that, I used to be playing games on my PSP and just putting ROMs onto it and playing it on the go. Now, I've been playing a lot of these classic games because uh, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch I missed out on. For example, right now I'm getting into Shin Megami Tensei, the original games. It's for a video, but it's also for me to play these games and, you know, get 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 this over with, in my personal opinion. You know, get, get into this franchise. After that, I'm going to be playing, like, Dragon Quest, some other games entirely. You get the point. And I'm playing them all through emulators. I don't simply have the time to go after and hunt these games. And, frankly, some of these games haven't been released on my side of the world, so I can't exactly buy them. Shin Megami Tensei, for example, I have to play a patched version of it because it was never released in English. Uh, unless you get the iOS version, which isn't going to be available once iOS 11 hits. So, I've been playing it on the emulators, and the reason that I've been shying away from them is there was a long time ago that I used to buy classic games. For example, I do own a lot of classic games, and it's because of that I ended up purchasing the original Xbox and the original PlayStation 2. I ended up buying some games for it until I realized that I had reached a point where I was paying these mom and shop, mom and pop shops, sorry, these uh, these independent game retailers, a huge bucks just to privilege to play these some of these old games, old games that they ended up looking online and finding out were worth a lot of money, and all ultimately not being worth that much, it was just being hyped up like crazy, so the act of playing these games just became kind of pointless to be buying from these uh, retailers. Now, could I spend uh, hundreds of dollars on some of these classic games and go home with them? Yes, you know, with smart fiscal planning you can do a lot of things in life, but it comes down to, is it worth that amount? Now lately I've been looking at a lot of the online stores and some of these classic games that I've been wanting to play have somehow been coming through a resurgence. A lot of these, a lot, a lot of these manufacturers, a lot of these game publishers, these game, uh, you know, companies like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo are actually pumping out a lot of these emulator games onto their uh, online stores. So you can download a lot of these classic games and play them using the official licensed emulator from the respective company themselves and play these games almost perfectly, almost perfectly. It's not exactly perfect, but almost. PlayStation 4 has been releasing a lot of PS2 games, and uh, you know the, the PlayStation 3 has always had a library of not just PS2 classics, but PS1 games, and Nintendo has always been pumping out games onto their Virtuals console, and they've been pumping them out for a decent price. You know, something like five, six bucks, I can definitely part ways with compared to something like, say, $70, $80. And I know a lot of people are saying, but you have the physical cartridge. Now, here's the problem with it, okay? Here's why I support emulation a whole lot more. For me, I personally find playing a lot of these games on emulators to be a lot more worthwhile than just playing them on a device. For those of you who forget how uh, SNES, NES, all these systems worked, if, uh, if, if, some, if something happened on the other side of the world and, and it was so minute and it barely, you know, barely affected us on this side of the world, your systems would crash, you would lose your save files, batteries would die out, cartridges especially, when they're, uh, on, when they're on board battery would die out, you would lose all your save files. And that's why I've stuck to, that's why I've stuck to emulators. I never Never lose my save files. The games look better compared to you know sticking them through the coaxial cables, the RF inputs, the 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 component cables. If anything, now you can just blow them up 1080p, 4K, whatever you want, HDMI it out to your TV and enjoy life in perfect HD and pixel perfect accuracy. And not only that, but the games do run as original as you want them to. For example, it was back in the day earlier when I was younger that emulators weren't exactly as perfect as they are now. Nowadays, you can perfectly emulate SNES using Hygen and get... A you, can, you can basically play a game the same way 
as a standard SNES would, all right? There's actually no fundamental difference between the two. It, it is almost the same. It is actually the same. The only people who are pointing it out are people who are either so burned in onto one side that they can't really see the advances of emulation technology nowadays. For those of you who really want to see how impressive it's gotten, you can play Persona 5 if you have a strong enough computer using the PS3 version of the game on your PC right now. In fact, as far as I was watching, the anime cutscenes worked fine, the sound was working fine, the gameplay was working fine. It was almost as perfectly emulated as you can, and that's a PS3 game, ladies and gentlemen. A PS3 game being emulated currently. And the reason why I find emulation to be the most important thing, which a lot of people don't understand, is that one day all these systems we have are going to die. If you play on the PlayStation 3, if you play on the fucking PlayStation 4, these systems are not going to be existing. They're not going to be around forever, okay? At one point, every PS3 will be gone, PS4s will be gone. So how are we going to play these games? Obviously, we have emulators, proper emulators, and all the ROMs accessible through our physical discs themselves. We can play these games for an infinite amount of time, and I find that to be really important. Red Dead Redemption is one of those games that is only console right now. And it's a really damn good game from last generation. I don't know if Rockstar has any notion of releasing it on the PC, but one day, when every 360 and PS3 dies, that game will be unplayable. The only way you can play it is if at that point, an emulator for the PS3 or the 360 gets strong enough to the point that people can replay that game again. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people have lost sight of. A lot of people who are against the idea of emulation. Now I get that if you want to play on the original SNES, NES 360, whatever, that's fine. That's on you and that, that you can push out as, as much as you want. But I see a lot of people who completely dog or disqualify people for playing their games on an emulator versus not. Some people don't have the luxury of going out and seeking for one of these systems. They've just been priced too hard to the point that the only people that make money off this shit are the people that are gouging prices up the ass for these old cartridges and old consoles that they can find somewhere in a pawn shop or any place and polish them up a little bit and sell for almost four or five times the price. For some people who profit off of this, it's not that gaming is their hobby. It's just an investment they've picked, a very niche investment, and now they want to price gouge everyone out of it. And we, the consumer, really have no choice. But it's thank thanks to companies like Sony and Nintendo, I know I'm thanking them at this point, that's kind of fucking rare, right? Uh, it's thanks to them that games like Final Fantasy VII, ga ga games of that sort, which used to be priced up the ass on eBay, coming out in all their three discs, are now relatively priced similar because it's one of those games, thanks to emulation and help from the official channel themselves, that you can play those games in a much more proper way, in, in a much more, in a much better way, and in a much more economically feasible way. I bought Final Fantasy VII for about $14 on the PlayStation 4 store. The game runs great. It comes with extra features like, you know, more battles on the field if you want to grind more, three times the battle speed. And it's great. That's all I really wanted. You know, it makes the game play a lot more smoother than I expected. Final Fantasy X and X2 apparently I heard do the same thing on the PlayStation 4. So in that case, emulating or porting the game in this case is rather more important than just seeking out these original copies, which a lot of these people are like, like damn straight price gouging. For me, emulating is a way of life that I've stuck with, and it's one of those things that I typically enjoy, and whenever I'm traveling, I rely on emulators. The GPD Win is a system that comes with, like, what, 10 hours of battery life? I can load up SNES ROMs, I can load up NES ROMs, Game Boy Advance games all onto it, games, of course, that I own, and I can just take them anywhere I go with me, and I can play them better than I can on the actual devices that they come out on. But it seems that there is a subset of communities on the internet that like to dog against people using emulators. And I want to make the case that they're not really evil. Without emulating, a lot of the people that are gaming in the future will only be stuck with the shit that we have nowadays. And I'm not here with rose-tinted glasses saying that gaming of the old days was a god's gift to the earth or anything. Look, gaming back in the days had problems. But games back in the days were a much more quality product compared to the crap that we're fed nowadays. And which is why I've personally been playing a lot more of these classic games. If you ever catch one of my streams, I end up playing a lot of these older games too. In fact, the more recent games that I play amounts to Rainbow Six Siege or maybe the one-odd game that comes out nowadays that's actually really good. Most of my gaming now is playing games of the older era, which is why I like Haunted Gaming right now, because I get to cover games from the older era instead of games nowadays where it seems like it, there's, there's, there's like one, it seems that they're more cut out, they're more microtransaction, they're more thrown away like crazy. And now games, of course, back in the day used to again suck, but most of them were 
a lot of them were a good damn quality product. And unfortunately, to play some of that quality product, we have to rely on emulators. Because, for example, if you go out of your way and play Earthbound, which is a game that costs hundreds of fucking dollars, it's not a game that most people are going to be affording feasibly. You know, nobody's down to pay three, four hundred bucks to play one RPG from back in the 90s. Even though that's a good game, Earthbound is a very good game, nobody's willing to part three, four hundred bucks to play that game unless, you know, they, they got a lot of money to burn, okay? I'm not willing to do that, and I don't, I don't really care for Earthbound. That's not, you know, it's not three, four hundred dollars, people. It's not these ten thousand dollar asking prices people on eBay are asking out for, okay? That's not right. But it's thanks to Nintendo and their virtual console and emulating games, which is why we're able to actually play this shit. And it ultimately goes down to what I want to end. I think a lot of people have lost the fucking plot or lost focus on what video gaming is kind of about. It's about playing fucking games, people. It's about playing games. It's about having your friends sitting over. It's about getting beers and playing games with your boys or, or whatever. It's about having a good time. And nowadays, because of the fact that there are people dogging these emulators and people are going out of their way to make sure you play games on the most official channels possible, which is the actual system, which at one point will die, are actually in a way killing the longevity of some of these games. Because at one point, if you dog against the idea of keeping these games alive forever, then you're going to lose these uh, pieces of software at one point. If you don't push the idea of emulating and constantly reaching backwards compatibility, which is what I think a lot of companies should be doing, which is why I support the PS3 project myself personally like crazy, is that at the end of the day, we're going to lose these systems. And at one point, 20 years from now, we might not be able to play games like Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, or even stuff like Uncharted 1, 2, 3, Last of Us, things like that, or whatever. Whatever is a true console exclusive right now. Games like Yakuza 0. We will not be able to play that at one point 20, 25 years down the road when these systems start to mass die out. So unless we start getting on the idea over here, gamers in the future will not be able to play games of past, okay? Think of this as like Time Capsule Project, okay? Think of this as keeping those awesome games you love alive and well. A lot of people that I've met nowadays have played games like Ocarina of Time, I've played games like Metal Gear Solid, I've played games like Final Fantasy VII using only emulators. And you know what? I don't discount their playthroughs, I don't discount it at all. Emulation is a thing that needs to be kept alive and healthy. And I know I sound kind of political right now, which I really am, I believe in this wholeheartedly, as somebody who worked in the tech field before, I can definitely see the appreciativeness of the teams that work behind creating projects like CEMU, like Citra, like RPCS3, like Xenia, all these, all these developers right now that are building these current emulators in progress. I definitely appreciate their work, and I definitely dog against a lot of the people that are turning gaming into more of a... Uh, mint like they're turning it more into like a magic the gathering fucking you know clusterfuck where people are making more money on like selling and trading they're turning these games in 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 into, into these into these faux gold bricks just so they can sell around and you know screw people out of a hobby that should be kept alive and well they're taking the gaming out of fucking gaming i know i've went on a lot of tangents for this but it's one of those things where ultimately you cover the idea of people dogging on the idea of emulation and how evil it is and stemming it into a bunch of different things. And I wanted to cover it all as much as I can. But I think I'm going to end this. I've said my piece. God bless emulation. And I hope it sticks around for as long as it can. And nobody should be dogged against it. And I think it should be kept alive and healthy. And I want to know what you all think about emulating as well. I know that whenever I did emulate in the past, I always got like private messages saying that I was doing an illegal activity by emulating, which wasn't necessarily the case. Let me know what you think about it. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.